Since you were last here, things have not really improved. We are still struggling along in mid-table. We've had another formation change. But you know what? I think the tide might be starting to turn. Our next three games are absolutely huge. And hopefully, this can be the start of a good second half to the season. Let's go. Welcome back to Dog Turds Into Diamonds. We're here turning Dog Turds Into Diamonds with AFC Russian and the Diamonds. Yet we are in 12th place in the league. We are still a mid-table team. Uh, as you know from the last episode, we are out of all the cup competitions. We have failed miserably in that respect this season. Just the league to concentrate on. And uh, although things haven't been great, let's have a look at the schedule here so you can see the results. You can see over the last few games, we have had a really, really tough time of it. After we lost 5-1 to Hungerford in the FA Trophy third round, we then went away to Cheltenham and lost 3-1 again. Um, yeah, this was also not particularly pretty. We were still persevering with the 3-5-2. You can see they were the better team. We did take the lead through George Lloyd in the eighth minute, but we were quickly pegged back. And in the second half, they took control. No complaints. The formation change just did not work. Um, Isaac Smith, again, was absolutely abysmal. He's having a terrible season. Um, Ozon were four as a left wing back. Wasn't great either. Um, yeah, just... The 3-5-2 experiment was clearly not working. We then took on top of the table Kings Lynn at home. Have a look at this. Sixth minute, first highlight of the game. We go 1-0 down to a Warburton free kick outside the box. One minute later, Gibbons gets sent off. 1-0 down, a man down and still 83 minutes to play. Obviously, there was no coming back from that. No way back from there. We were well beaten and um, to be honest, it was this game. I know I've done this various times this season. It was this game that just told me, do you know what? Just go back to the 4-2-3-1. Uh, um, I just decided, you know what? I've, I've tried four different formations this season. We've tried the 3-5-2. We've tried 2-3-1-2. Uh, Sorry, 4-3-1-2. We've tried 4-2-4 and we've tried 4-3-4-2-3-1. Uh, four, There's so many formations, I can't even remember them. And even within the 4-2-3-1, we've tried a variation of that with a defensive midfielder. So, I mean, we've tried all sorts to try and get better results this season. And in the end, after this game, I just decided... Do you know what? At least with the 4 2 uh, 3 1, I know that the squad has been built for that formation. And I know that at the start of the season, although we weren't getting results, we were still at least playing well in terms of the possession, the amount of chances we had. Things just weren't going in our favour. So I thought, if I'm going to lose, I might as well lose playing well. Um, or. I don't even know if playing well is the phrase anymore. The season's been that bad. Um, but I just thought I would rather have possession, have shots at goal, if I'm going to lose anyway. I don't want to play a different formation and just get destroyed every game. So for Bromley away, uh, we went back to the 4-2-3-1. And we got a really good performance out of the players. Apart from, as you can see, Crowsdale here. Because he was sent off right at the end of the game. Apart from that, we played well. We had more shots than them, although we didn't hit the target enough. We did have a higher XG. And we had slightly more possession than Bromley. Now, I feel like we were unfortunate not to win this game. You can see their XG has a little spike where they get their equaliser towards the end of the game. But other than that, the entire second half, we were the better side. 
We went we went behind early yet again. We keep conceding early goals. A Calburn penalty. Um, Price then got us back into it. James Price back in the start in 11. And he got another goal. Thomas Hughes back in the start in 11. He got the second goal set up by Price. Price then had a goal chalked off. And uh, yeah, in the 81st minute, it was, again, we conceded so many early goals and so many late goals. In the 81st minute, they got what I think was probably an undeserved equaliser. I think we deserved the three points. But I was just pleased to get a half-decent performance and, uh, and have a few shots at goal again. And to be honest, you know in Football Manager, you kind of get a feeling about how your tactics are going. And in this game, it just kind of felt from the highlights, from the way the stats were looking, it just kind of felt like we were doing well again. I haven't felt like that all season long. And I felt like that again when we then beat Barnet at home, one nothing, And um, it was a really, really good performance. 63% possession, 18 shots, 8 on target. Uh, we should have had more goals. It was James Price scoring again, set up by Thomas Hughes. The, it, it was basically back to the old guard for these two games. Just um, You can see in defence, Ray and Gabadevo were the, uh, the chosen defensive partnership here. And um, Gabadevo's presence, although when you look at his ratings, he is not meant to be a Vanarama National League standard defender. Just the fact that he's enormous and got huge jumping reach he just wins everything in the air it really shored us up um, so we got a good performance here Matt Butcher was great in midfield I've taken him off the transfer list and I'll explain why in a moment but just everything clicked here in this game a dominant performance like I say we should have scored more just really really pleasing and to see James Price back and scoring again is delightful um, he was uh, disappointed at being out of the team but now he's played the last three scored in each of them he's got five in nine in the league this season which is obviously very very good uh, five in 12 in all competitions he's got an assist as well um, just really pleased to see him back in some sort of form because we really do need him the top scorer from the last two seasons so um yeah, really pleased with the 21-year-old. And he's actually keeping George Lloyd out of the team right now. So a much-needed three points. Um, it was two games unbeaten. We then went away to Scunthorpe, who, after beating us here, have moved up to third in the league. So they are a good team. But do you know what? We gave them a really good game. Look at the stats. We had more shots than them. We had a better XG. We had 50% of the possession. To be honest, they dominated us in the first half. Um, the only thing I changed was the only thing I changed was just going more positive. We went to an attacking mentality, more aggressive. We were pressing them higher up the field, and in the second half, to be honest, they couldn't deal with us. And I was a little bit disappointed in the end with the way we came back, not to get something out of the game. Really, really pleasing performance, apart from Thomas Hughes, who was poor. Azonwa 4 came on off the bench for him and performed very, very well. Got the assist for James Price, who in this game was playing right wing because George Lloyd started up front. George Lloyd had a poor game here. Um, makes me question really whether I'm going to continue with that. George Ray at the back was very poor as well. Um, but... Um, we, we did have, like I say, a pleasing performance. So uh, I, I sort of feel like I can see the, the, the green shoots of a recovery here. And I'm kind of feeling quite confident for the second half of the season. Part of that is because, as you can see, it's the 16th of January, 2027. And we've done a little bit of business in the transfer market. If we go to, I mean, you can see here, I've got some offers for Jimmy Patterson from Carl Shelton. And uh, let's have a look. Who else is, has got offers? Leighton Farley has got an offer from Carl Shelton as well. I don't know if they'll go. I mean, they're both on non-contracts. I don't know if they'll go because uh, 
Well, Carl Schalton is probably not the level they want to be playing at, but uh, I'm not going to stop them if they do. I offered Ryan Crowsdale out. He was unhappy. He he says he wants to be played as a ball-winning midfielder. Now, in my opinion, I have played him as a ball-winning midfielder nearly every time he's played. He has played some games as the defensive midfielder to mark the number 10 of the opposition. But in general, he's played as a ball-winning midfielder. But he's not happy. Said he wanted to go. Um, I offered him out and we got three offers for him. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to transfer list him. I'm going to make him available for loan. Um, if I can't get a deal for him, I will offer him out on loan just to try and get his wages off the books. Um, but yeah, basically, we uh, we got three offers for him. Very good offers. I'm going to offer him out again. I was asking two and a half thousand pounds and a friendly. So a friendly will generally bring in sort of two, three, four thousand pounds. So it would be a good deal for us. I'm going to offer him out again. Um, am I able to actually suggest that he is surplus to requirements? Let's have a look. His transfer status. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can. Don't think there's anything else I can do here to say that he's surplus to requirements. Is there? So um, yeah, basically, well, he's transfer listed. So hopefully, if these clubs come in and offer offer for him again, um, that will just give him the motivation to accept one of their deals, and that will get two hundred and forty pounds a week off of the books, which would be very very handy. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that he's that he's uh, uh, kind of playing up, but I think we've got replacements for him in the squad. Now, someone that we have offered a loan deal for from Walsall is Scott Wilson. He's a central defender, but he can also play at left back. And I think he looks uh, an, an exceptional central defender. Six foot one, 14 jumping reach, 11 heading, really good marking. I think um, if he comes in, I think we're paying his £300 a week wages. If he comes in, I think he will be our best central defender. If we uh, just compare him to George Ray, for example, our captain, you can see there on the polygon, he is clearly a better player. He's better technically, sup supposedly they're the same mentally and the same physically. But I think Scott Wilson looks a much better player. Um, who else have we got in defence? Um, we've also got, uh, where was he? Let's have a look. Uh, eyes of, uh, Connor McAvoy, that's who I want to look at. So if we look at Connor McAvoy, again, they are supposedly the same technically, the same mentally, but Scott Wilson is a little better physically. So I think if he comes in, which is looking pretty likely that he will, I think he becomes a new central defensive uh, mainstay at the back. So that would be really good. Waiting to get that confirmed. Um, but if we look at transfer history, we've also bought in Lewis Butroid from Gloucester and he is a left back. I tried to get him in the summer. I offered him a contract. He decided to go to Gloucester in League Two. He hasn't really played for them. Look, he's only made three appearances all season. So he has come in and he is instantly going to be our starting left back. I think he's a huge upgrade on Evans who apart from not having such good ratings, has had a really poor season. I mean, you can see there's just no comparison. They, um, they, are, they are not the same players, although Evans does have much better mentals, but that is down to these amazing stats for things like aggression, bravery, determination, teamwork, and work rate. But for things that you really want from a defender, like concentration, decisions, um, positioning, all of those things... Uh, Butchroid is better at and supposedly they're the same physically but I like the look of what Butchroid brings a lot more so I think we've got an instant upgrade at left back Butchroid is in the squad or in the team for today's game I'm really really pleased to get him in I really think he's gonna really make a big difference to us at the back and that was made possible because as you can see on the other side here we've had a few players go out first of all a couple on loan now, Luke Matruk, I forgot to mention this on the last episode. He has been gone a while since November, look. He wanted to go out on loan because 
when I switched to the 4-3-1-2. As a winger, he wasn't getting a game. He quickly became unhappy. Boston United were willing to take him. They're in the Vanarama National League North. They were willing to take him. He's been playing there. He scored a few goals, got an assist. He's doing all right. Um, I'm just happy to have those £425 a week off of the books. Um, he hasn't really, when he's played for us, he hasn't really managed to do it. I think it's really good just to get him out. Um, Sam Taylor, our new striker, he's also gone out. I mean, he played a few games for us. You can see in the league, he just got one goal in seven. Didn't really hit the ground running. Uh, again, I offered him out. Greys were willing to take him. They're paying his wages, or I think 90% of his wages, but then with a loan fee, which takes it above the value of his wages. So it's a really good deal for us. He's scored, I think, two on his debut. He scored, hasn't scored since. But again, I think it just works for everybody. Um, gets his uh, £325 a week off of the books. And yet, yeah, Zidane has gone. Zidane Iqbal has left and he's gone for 16 and a half thousand plus um i think when he plays 20 games we get another 5000 and 20 percent of any future fee so he's instantly got a value of up to 130,000. look if he was to be sold on for say a hundred thousand in the future then uh, we'd get a nice little percentage of that so um Obviously, he never really did it in his time at the club. Last season, he was very poor, a 6.67 rating in the league, no goals or assists. And um, this season, not much better. 11 games, no goals, no assists, 6.77. The ex-Manchester United man just has not done it. So um, the fact that Al Zawra have paid uh, a decent little bit of money for him, he wants to get into the Iraqi national team, so I suppose that is why he's accepted the deal. Um, yeah, he looks like he should have been great. He looks like he really should have been something special for us, but it never worked out. We've got some money back for him, which is excellent. Um, and that's just freed up a little bit of money in the finances. So you can see right now, uh, with Butchroyd coming in, we are paying £300 below the wage budget for the season 340 pounds more or less if that that other loan deal goes through we are going to be over budget but if i can get crowsdale off the books then that would set us up nicely again and apart from that well we've got a player in on trial right now nelson ago now you can see we can't see all his stats right now he is a striker um, his career has been spent at Port Vale with a couple of loan spells in the Vanarama North. When he played in the Vanarama North, he was exceptional. Um, got 25 goals over two loan spells in the Vanarama North. Uh, he has played League One for, for Port Vale. Um, hasn't really cut it in the Football League. But um, yeah, I mean, he's in on trial. If we look at his physicals, Without having the full picture, you can still see physically he is absolutely superb. Uh, technically, yeah, we've still got to see what comes out of this. He might not be that great, but um, off the ball, really, really good for a striker. Decisions look pretty good. Composure could be decent. His uh, teamwork looks okay. Yeah, um, he might be physical more than anything else, but... If we do want to sign him, I'm in that football manager mode where you just try and sign a striker to solve your problems. You can see if we do want to sign him, it's a non-contract, so we'd be able to cancel it at any time. Um, how much will he accept? So he wants 350 a game. Let's just knock this down a bit and see what he'll accept. So I think it looks like we can get him for 300 a game. Will he accept that? No, he still won't. Um, let's uh, let's try and go for that. I think he'll accept that. So he's accept three, accepted £300 a game. I'm going to offer him that contract while I can, because I think if I bring in the other deals, uh, I won't be able to offer anyone else a contract. But um, if we can get Crowsdale off the books, that will really help just to put us under again. 
Um, yeah, I'll I'll see I'll see how long I can delay that deal. But if Nelson Ago looks like an improvement on the strikers that we've got, we'll look to get him in. Apart from that, I've just got a couple of left wingers that I'm looking at. Um, I've I've also offered some left wingers uh, who are uh, unattached. I've offered them trials. So after this game against Stockport, we should have a group of left wingers in on trial. Hopefully one at least will be good enough to uh, improve the squad or improve the team really and just give us a little bit extra up front. So um, let's go forward to this game against Stockport. They are sixth in the league. They are doing very, very well. They've got a game in hand which could put them as high as fourth. But we really need to win our game in hand and get to 28 points. It would put us six off the playoffs. Um, so we are under pressure if we do still harbour any hopes of playoffs. I'm remembering that Swindon last season, the first half of the season, they were in the bottom half of the table. They had an incredible run through the second half of the season and ended up going up through the playoffs. So um, there is precedent. Notts County are also down there. Dagenham and Redbridge are down there. So some clubs that did really well last season are stuck down here. Barnet as well. Um, I think if one of us can get on a bit of a run, there is still hope. But uh, we've got to do it soon. We can't keep losing games. So um, we take on Stockport here. Yeah, don't talk to me about the FA Trophy. That's uh, still still painful. So Stockport playing a 4-4-2, I think that, that helps us, that suits us. We are going with Sam Blair in goal. He's having a poor season, but I, I think I really want to try and get his confidence up. This, this morale here where we can see some, some yellow arrows on the up, that is actually improvement on recent times. So I feel like things are kind of moving in the right direction. At the back for today, I'm going with Staunton and Buttroyd as the fullbacks. George Ray, the captain, I'm going to leave him in for the moment. You can see with a 6.92 rating, he is our second best central defender in terms of rating this season behind Gabba Debo. Um, McAvoy is going to partner him today. I really want McAvoy to come good. Matt Butcher and Sam Cornish are going to be the central midfield pairing. Um, that means Max Sheaf is left out on the bench. He hasn't been great. And I just think Matt Butcher... Um, with Sheaf having only seven tackling, it kind of affects our midfield presence with his seven strength, five foot nine as well. Matt Butcher offers a little bit extra physically in the midfield. So I'm going to stick with Butcher and Cornish to start the game. Joe Hardy is going to go right wing. And that means James Price can go back to the centre forward position. Three in his last three games. We need him to keep that going. Joe Hardy has not scored for a while, but he has been playing more as the right winger now. Liam Gibbs is the number 10. Azon Wafour will come in on the left wing. That means the other substitutes are Gabadebo, Isaac Smith, who can play holding midfield or central midfield, Max Sheaf, who can play central midfield or in the number 10, Thomas Hughes and George Lloyd completing the bench. Hopefully this team can put in another good performance today and get a good win against one of the stronger teams in the league. Lewis Butroid will give him, I think, the number 12 shirt. There you go. Get him involved. He has, uh, I think, been playing reserve team football for Gloucester, so his fitness is not terrible. Hopefully, he'll be, uh, he'll be all right to get through today's game and put in a good performance. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm feeling optimistic. I'm feeling optimistic. Even the good teams in the Vanarama National League. Uh, they are they are obviously strong in comparison to the worst teams in the Vanarama National League, but none of them are fantastic teams. So if we can start to get things right tactically, hopefully we can get a major performance here, a, a, a good victory, and we can start moving things in the right direction. So do you know what? I'm not going to do anything anything tactically here. I'm going to stay with an attacking mentality. The way we finished our last game, um, I kind of feel like the attacking mentality is the way to go. We are going to run at the defence. We've got uh, wingers with a little bit of dribbling and a little bit of pace. We are playing for uh, 
playing for uh, set pieces again and you can see we're playing more direct than before i've 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 kind of abandoned the possession game but it, i mean we're still going with the formation that allows us to have a little bit more possession we are countering and distributing quickly so it's a little bit more direct than we were earlier in the season and i've gone back to a higher defensive line um it's kind of a little bit closed up here we'll see if maybe i need to press a little bit higher up but we're getting stuck in as well so hopefully this is the way forward for the rest of the season because we really do now need to string some results together we've had only earlier in the season we had back-to-back -back wins uh, i think in the first month of the season we have not managed that since so um, we are a very inconsistent team and we are starting off here with a free kick can liam gibbs do something special he can what a hit and the man who scored three the entirety of last season has got his fifth of this season what a wonderful free kick i thought with the angle they usually end up going wide from there that is an absolutely delightful free kick let's praise the players and let's see if we can keep this going stockport have come back and they have now had more shots at goal than us can we get hold of this ball coming out of defence? It goes back to their winger. They're just moving the ball around a bit and they've beaten us in the air there. It goes out wide. Can we deal with a cross? We cannot. And Mark Owen. Oh dear, I'd prefer if that was Mark Owen from take that. Um, well, I mean, defensively, we've just been done all ends up again, haven't we? Owen comes into the box and was that Butcher? Who is that? Is that? I couldn't see who that was. I think that might have been Butcher or it could have been maybe Cornish. They just didn't go with his run. And we are level once again. We've got a corner, but they look the better team right now. What can we come up with here? Ray heads it wide. It's a great opportunity from that range. We've got to do better. And do I press a little bit higher up in the second half? Because we've had more possession, but we are not making shots out of it. I don't know if maybe we need to win the ball closer to the goal. Um, let's tell them they can do this. Come on, keep doing what you're doing. We obviously need to have more shots at goal. This was the problem at the start of the season playing this formation we weren't getting enough shots at goal um i'm gonna go a little bit wider i think wide against 442 really seems to work better and i think i'm gonna try to distribute to the playmaker rather than the flanks i think there's gonna be maybe more space for us having a man up in midfield so i'm gonna make those changes and hopefully that can give us a little bit to more control with the possession that we've had in the second half let's see if that can change our fortunes what i don't want to do is now lose two in a row um, i really want to see us compete with the bigger team here i'm going to hold off my shout until i see the outcome of this highlight so far we've only had i think have we seen a goal from both highlights cleared off the line we got lucky there let's demand more from the players and we've got what have we got so i don't know what what that came from I think it was probably a corner wasn't it very odd place for the highlight to start and they are away on the break here we haven't covered them particularly well on the break there but droid he can't defend the cross it's off the post and we survive again we, i think i've got to accept we have not been the better team here i'm going to switch to a positive mentality just put a little bit more focus on what we're doing at the back not much but right what do i want to change here because we've not been good enough but droid is having a very poor debut um, and mcavoy at the back looks terrible i'm going to bring gabadebo in and in midfield i mean neither our midfielders have been great i'm going to change butcher for max sheaf and as it's in his contract i'm going to play max sheaf as a central midfielder rather than a box-to-box -box midfielder and joe hardy has been very poor as has james price um who do i change 
I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the, those two at the moment, and what I'm gonna do is not play into space. Try and get it into feet rather than into space because it looks like that's been easily dealt with. So those two changes, and let's see if we can finish strong here. Let's encourage the players. Disappointed with Butchoid's debut, but um, again, it's one of these games. Let's let's change Price out because he's not improved. Um, Joe Hardy has improved a little. George Lloyd, can you do something for us, buddy? He's not motivated by the pep talk. Um, can we get one chance out of this game? Come on. Let's just go attacking for the last five minutes. I think it looks like it's going to end a draw, isn't it? We have only had the one attacking highlight, or which we scored from, and then another where we headed the corner over or wide from Hardy. No, it wasn't Hardy. It was Ray. Um, yeah, disappointing. We had a couple of shots at the end there, didn't we? But in the end, you probably have to say we've got to be pleased with the draw. Um, I'll tell them they were unlucky. Oh, they didn't want to hear that. Um, I'm going to tell them they defended well. The midfielders. Um, you were unlucky today, but it was a good effort. Yeah, I think that, that looks like the way to go, doesn't it? You were unlucky today. Um, I think we were actually pretty poor, but there you go. So, um, yeah, there you go. It's another draw. Um, still searching for, for something that works, something that makes the difference to our season. We're just, I mean, we're battling. We're battling these games out. We're picking up the odd point here and there. But we are certainly a long way short of a run of form that would get us into the playoffs, which is obviously disappointing. But I'm kind of at peace with it. I'm kind of at peace with the fact that we might have to forget about playoffs this season. Um, the board just want us to avoid relegation. So a top half finish, they would probably be ecstatic about again. But um, yeah, you can see, I mean, we're eight points off the playoffs. There is half the season to go. So there's a long way to go yet. If we can make an influential sign-in or, or have a little tweak in the tactics that just changes our fortunes, maybe. We've got Barrow away next, um, which, there you go. There's all our uh, all our uh, trialists coming in, which will hopefully present us with a really good left wing option for the rest of the season. We'll see what happens about that. Um, I think I'm going to turn this into a double header today, guys. Um, I think Barrow away is hopefully a winnable game. And then Chesterfield away, who are going really, really well. That would finish the first half of the season. So I think we'll come back for a part two today against Chesterfield away. So click on the link for that. They are second in the league. And you can see they've only lost one game all season. That is going to be really tough. But again, if we can have a good performance against them then uh, maybe that can give us some confidence for the rest of the season as well. So come back shortly, click on the link for part two of today's episode. It will be Chesterfield away after we've gone away to Barrow. And hopefully we'll have a positive result there that can set us up, hopefully for a good game against Chesterfield and then a good second half of the season. See you very shortly when you click on that link for part two. If you've enjoyed this part one, Click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you very soon.